okay, so this is the Duda <clears throat> dashboard again that shows the sites. Um, you should have received a welcome email and probably gone in and set up how to, you know, get into this um, section. Um, what we're going to edit is the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. And I've set up uh, two edits. I, I, uh, the previous video I showed just basically how to update, you know, double click on the JPEG um, and then uh, <coughs> swap out your, your um, you know, JPEG image or PNG image with the one that's in the site. Um, so in this one though, we are going to take actually a little uh, a template that I built and play around with that. So the first thing you, you want to do is you can hit click on this black thing or you can click the edit button. Um, so let's do that. And it'll open up the editor. Usually opens up on the uh, home page. So what you want to do is you want to go to pages and then you want to go to template with blocks and duplicate maybe add your name or the name of your planet uh, planet name um, and then click duplicate and it will add it to the main menu here um, what we want to do with those we want to take your planet name and add it into the destination so the next thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to grab these little, the little handle to the side, the three little dots, and drag it inside that folder. Um, and that way, your planet will be there. And then you can uh, click that little triangle, close that up, press the X up here on pages of pop ups, close that up. So now we are in um, planet name. And like if you click on destinations, um, you can see. And also up here, it'll tell you what page you're on. You can also go to other pages here. Um, so let's get started. So I have put in basically placeholder graphics everywhere. Um, this one, you know, some of you have more complex um, items or pages. Um, but for the most part, this should work. So we've got a couple things going on in here. We have a uh, I'll click on the edit the section first and oh every time this little desktop breakpoint things with the little crown on it's gonna pop up ignore it don't use that one use the main desktop one um, just to the right of it so now we're in here make a little bit of room on the screen um, oh the layers thing is actually really cool now too you can move things around on layers um, and I also discovered like a a freeform drop and drag where you can make a site that's just has everything everywhere and uh, I don't even know how that works um, but it's pretty cool um, so what you're gonna want to edit there's a couple of sections there's first the uh, the main flex column which if you click close to the the outer edge here near the border um, you can edit that and um, the next section is the uh, the the name of the planet. Um, it's this image section here. Um, the next part is the actual spinning planet, which is in this uh, little flex box. So you have to like click two times to get to it, to get to the image. Um, and don't worry, I'm going to go through and place all these after I go through this initial introduction of what I think is. This is live text, so you can actually go in here if you double click on it. You can change out the text. Um, you can even upload a typeface if you want, and it'll add it to the typeface menu. Um, like I uploaded this uh, Naish regular, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, also down here, I have a, a section to add an infographic. Um, and double clicked on the infographic, and you know, actually it pulled up the the re replace thing here. Um, and then I have another thing to add like an alien or something over here. Um, and then finally, at the bottom, I have a place to put you know some sort of bottom image that uh, sits at the bottom of this big frame or this section. Uh, a couple of you have cities. I know Brian has his little alien guy. Um, so uh, 
those are the main sections that we're going to have. Now, what you're going to do is you will you probably have your uh, work in Illustrator because this is the vector class. Um, you're actually going to have to either uh, you know, export things from Illustrator as PNG files. Um, but what you want to do is create an individual file for each thing. So you want an individual file for your headline, you want an individual file for your background, um, you want an individual file um, for your planet, and you want an individual file for your uh, infographic. You'll want an individual file for whatever you decide to put here. You could leave it blank even if you want. Um, and then you want an individual file for like the, the graphic that's at the bottom here. Um, and I have put those all in a folder on my desktop. I'll kind of show you how that looks. So I've got like this folder right here. Um, and you guys can share the files with me if you're running into trouble. I'll, you know, I'll put a, I've already started putting a file sharing folder on um, Google Drive. I'll share one with everyone in the class. Um, but you know, I have one for the alien, I have one for the background, I have one for cities, I have one for the header for the infographic uh, I tried an experiment with some movies a couple of them look really cool but it I'm <laughs> but they, uh, they were too big to upload um, I've got the panels placeholder graphics planets um, stuff like that so let's go back into Duda and we will start editing the template so we look up here and make sure you're on the right on your planet um, so make you know we're on planet name um, and the first thing you might want to do is swap out the background so it um, if it's not open already there's this little editor button here that if you click on that it opens the design panel to the right um, if you close it that little you know the little toggle comes up there uh, for you those who are familiar with um, Figma the uh, the new layers part of Duda actually works a lot like the layers in Figma. It's pretty cool, and it just came out this week. Um, so uh, that's actually a cool thing. That also part of that actually allows you to um, like place things anywhere within sections or, or on the page, um, which I thought was really really cool. Uh, so. Um, let's go into the design mode here. Actually, we're not going to go into design just yet. Um, we're going to use the co the design co the design tools on the right. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to swap out the background with a different background. Um, and how we do that? We'll click on that background. We're going to scroll down the list. There's a thing that says background here. It shows. What background is in there right now? I took uh, Sophia's um, star background and added, cleaned out the um, watermarks and added some blinking stars to it. And it's, it's, I didn't, I probably, I did it as uh, three frames. I probably should have did it like five or six frames, and it would have looked a little bit cooler. Um, so we're gonna swap out the background. So click, click the shape to the right here, like right at the border. Scroll down the list. Click replace. And um, let's go find, let's upload a new back. Well, actually, I might have the background in here already. Let's go find one. Oh, let's try, let's try this one. Yeah. Um, that's an animated background that's repeating. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's a little crazy. Uh, but yeah, if you, you create an animated GIF that is about um, a thousand pixels across by like 500 tall or something like that, um, you could use that and it'll just tile it in the background. I think this one's a vertical one. Um, you know, we can go to replace again, try a different background. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here? Like I've got this space, but let's take a look what this one does. Woo! Look at that. It's pretty crazy too. But you can use animated GIFs in these backgrounds, or uh, and probably the more subtle the better, so that you can read things. Uh, let's swap it out one more time um, with the uh, maybe go back to what uh, I created for Sophia. So let's go back to the original one. There we go. That's a little bit 
a little bit easier to read. Okay, the next thing would be to change out the name of your planet. So um, to, to swap out an image, just like the background, double click on the image and your image um, panel will come up and then you can just click replace. Um, I'm going to tell you, I, I will include uh, some notes on this. Your, your headline or your name of the planet should probably be about um, a thousand pixels across by three or four hundred tall. Um, and like this one is, the size is 1000 by 242. Um, I've got another one in here. Uh, purple one doesn't stand out as much, but we'll, we'll just use that for now. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and s swap out the planet. And so we'll kind of click through, double click to the planet on the planet. Uh, the icon will come up, it'll say what size. It's actually pretty small. Um, remember, I you know, you can download, uh, you can create those, uh, the 3D gift maker.com has the ability to create uh, these rotating spheres. So you can go there and create your planet um, or, you know, you can put a static one in or something. Or if it's, you know, maybe your planet's the shape of a cube or or some sort of amorphous blob. Um, so we're gonna click replace again and I'm gonna find, I think, actually I'm gonna upload a planet. So there's an upload button down here. Um, I'm gonna go into my planet files. And oh yeah, this is the bigger one. Let's well no, this one's small too. Let's open this. How big is this one? It's kind of cool. It's gonna take a second. Oh, there, swapped out the planet. Um, and then press the little X in the corner to close that window. So now we've got a new planet in there you would replace your planet in there from your drive. Um, next, we're gonna change out the text. Um, so here I have a headline. You can you can type your s stuff in here or you can cut and paste it from, um, from a text editor or something. The only issue with that is sometimes if you paste it like from Illustrator, it might, it, it, it carries some extra code with it and it, get, it can get really messy. So like actually using um, something like text editor and making sure that it is in um, plain text format um, will uh, make that work. So like if I go take this plain text format here, copy it, and with that headline selected, paste it, it'll paste it in in the same color. Um, and then we can uh, paste in some other new text copy it there um, I take this whole block of text here whoa it kind of does that with paragraphs I start from the top of the paragraph and paste that in there so then you know, you've got some new stuff in here um, you can actually go in and uh, change the size of this um, I thought I think there's a way to change like the uh, the um, size you know, one you know one size at a time um let's see 22 oh yeah you, you, you double click on it and just type in um here or you can scroll down and quickly change the size and we're going to do that this one this is 36 we're going to change this to a like 44 so we'll double click on that 44 hit return so the headline is 44 um let me put now once again, we're going to do the same thing down here for the infographic on, whoops, and we're going to click done. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing down further. We're going to click on the, the um, whole section. Make When you do that, again, it's going to go to that screen with crown on it. Make sure you go to the desktop. The way to notice is that the one that you're editing will have this border on the background. Um, and... Uh, so now we can go in and we can you know edit this uh, th this flex box here, which changes proportionally as we scroll through different as we uh, change out sizes here. You can double click again on the infographic, click replace. Um, let's upload a new infographic. 
and go to my folders that have some infographics in them. There's an infographic. And then uh, this one I had kind of set aside here to put like a spaceship or an alien or some other image in. You could also delete it. Um, and double click on that and replace that with something. Uh, again, I'm going to upload. Let's upload a different alien. Let's try to do one that's a weird size so it can show a little bit how to play around with the box sizes. So we're going to go alien, uh, alien 2. Let's try alien 3. That's a really tall alien. And hopefully it comes in really weird. Yeah, actually it did. Um, whoops. Uh, click this X over here. Let's scroll up the page. So we've got this really tall alien and an infographic. You know, we could actually, um, you know, add another graphic that's taller on this side. Um, there is a way to add something underneath that, but that's a little more advanced and gets really tricky. But let's say we want the alien to be closer to the same height as that box. Scroll down to the bottom of the image and click just once on the image, and you'll get these little handles in the corners. They work pretty much like other programs. Grab the middle one, and that's not working. Maybe it's a different one. Okay, we grab the corner one, maybe? Yeah, grab the corner one. Okay, that's kind of scaling in, it's scaling up. And what you do is you pull these different sliders around the shape, and it'll automatically position things. Um, Working from the bottom, I think you can work from the top too. Let's see. Yeah, you can work from the top as well. So now our alien is in there, um, scaling it down. Uh, another cool thing, when you're working on doing the scaling and stuff with the images, you can actually select an image and let's say you want to flip it to the other side, you can do that or flip it back with the image tool up here. Um, we're in the edit design section already. Uh, you can add space between the um, the columns too. Uh, let's see, how are we looking here? Yeah, we got the same proportions. Everything's centered. Um, this is full image. This is cover image. What happens if full image? Full image is generally the one you want to work with because it, when you're scaling things, it um, the whole image scales. Cover basically stretches the image to fill the shape. They're very close to the same thing. Um, and so that's that, that's that. We've got this, like we could grab the corner of this and make it smaller maybe. Um, maybe make the alien a little bigger. And there are ways to make this guy overlap up here and start having to have these layers um, oh, like it look much more dynamic, but it's, it's, it's start when you start working on other sizes, it becomes extremely complicated um, and it takes a lot of a lot of work and sometimes you even have to get into the HTML code. So um, for this design, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stick with stuff that's really, really simple. Um, let's see, let's, let's, uh, let's delete this and see what happens. See, if we delete that, it centers the other shape and, you know, you might want to do that. Well, let's undo that delete. I want to keep this, uh, temple, oh, the template the same. Okay. It's still good. Uh, and then finally let's, uh, swap out this image at the bottom. Um, so we're going to go and we're going to find another we can double click on it going to pop up the image replacer or plate placement thing. I'm uh, going to click replace. I've got a, another city image in here somewhere. I thought I did. I don't. Let's upload a different city image. I'm going to upload a new image. Um, go into cities. Yeah, let's do the future city one or city based one. It's going to upload it. Um, cool. So now, you know, we've completely changed the design. Um, and uh, basically click done. Uh, let's kind of 
toggle through these other size possibilities. Let's look at the uh, tablet size, see how this looks. It's okay, maybe we wanna scale the alien a little bit in the tablet size. Um, and let's see, maybe move it up some. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, click done. And then uh, let's go back and see how this looks. Make sure it didn't do anything weird here. No. So when you start with the desktop size and then you work your way down to editing the ones, it saves the desktop version. And then it like it does some background stu stuff in the background of like saving the code for like just the tablet size. And then finally, we're gonna go to the phone and um, see how this is set up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, the phone actually works pretty well. So uh, don't have to worry too much there. I mean, we could change this so it's all vertical, but I think that looks cool. It'll get, it'll get the point across. Um, and then that's done. And then finally you can hit republish. Um, and then we'll go to like uh, the, we're gonna click on, usually I go and just like go back to start editing again. But uh, if you wanna see what, you know, what your page looks like, go to the pre, this uh, preview, open up a new tab, and then we'll go to a page template with blocks. And hey, it didn't upload, it didn't change it. Let's see why it didn't change that. Template editor. To the site, congratulations. We've changed the site. We are on, oh, planet, because it's the, the name of this page is a planet name. Um, so, and that's down in here. Okay, planet name, there we go. Yeah, there. there's planet name. This is what we started with, template with blocks. Um, yeah, and then you got planet name here pretty cool and I think this sort of idea will work for most of the sites people are creating so like Brian and Sophia and um, Mason they've got a sort of like a city Brian has a planet at the bottom he probably include his little alien on the planet um Maya has like a, a um, a garnet down here the woman and then she's got like a, a background which she could probably cut those crystals out on a separate layer I've actually done that um you know like act, let's go into the edit so like on for Maya's site um like I actually went in and I would she was the one I was working with yesterday um and uh, I have it saved in the graphics here. Here we go. So I'm gonna select that. So see, her stuff's down here. You know, she might want to change it up a little bit, um, but she would probably also want to. In she could actually include Garnet, her alien, down here, or she could um, she could maybe put. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong. See, look, I'm in the wrong section, so the border and stuff is missing. I do not want to do this. Um, I wonder how I exit. Maybe I can't. <laughs> Bummer. Ah, oh, replace. I wish that. Th I wish there was a way to lock that. Uh, let's go back and replace that with the. I don't. Know, I think it was this city that was in there. Yeah. Um. So you know she could actually go in and I have. Uh, have the alien I think I have a like a test that I did of hers too so we're done there, it's weird there's not a cancel button um and then let's see what Maya's oh this one I just actually swapped out um yeah it's just her background but you know Maya could take her and kind of draw shape around all these individual pieces all the way across in her Photoshop file get rid of the background, make sure it's transparent, and then export it as a PNG file, and then that'll drop at the bottom. Um, 
then she could probably actually take like this background with all the plants and other things on it kind of extend the brown way way down and swap it out as a uh, as a uh, the background image and then place other things in here and I can sit I you know if you want to meet with me um, to kind of go over some of this stuff um, and uh, for like it probably take about 30 minutes to go through and like build someone's you know working together um, on this online to build uh, the planet you may not one of the things that happens with web design is that sometimes what you build in Figma or um, Illustrator and what you design ends up having to be modified. It's often it's often because of uh, how the site is hosted, um, what the worst case scenario of the browser is going to be, what the budget is, what the timeline is. You know, it, let's say you wanted, oh, I want to animate this and I want to have code and all these things going on. That could you know maybe you could find someone on Fiverr to do it for like two thousand um, dollars if you're working with someone doing it all in code and not an animated file that could actually be you know anywhere from one thousand to like five thousand dollars just to get this piece to animate um, could end up being you know for like a freelancer that might be the whole budget of the site um, typical sites cost should be like the minimum ten thousand dollars with at least one to two months of work time to build it um but uh that's a whole other story about those kind of budgets um so there's a lot of things that get in into the engineering and budgeting timelines um and certain things like you know if it's going to take a month to do the animation and you only have you know two weeks to get make the edits to the site there's no way it can get done um, so you have to come up with a backup plan. Um, and so those are those are reasons why often sites look really boring and have really boring grids. It's all based on um, the, the cost of like building a site that you know that's really, really cool um, and the time it takes to do it. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna stop talking now because I could go on and on about all these details about web design um, and what really comes into play. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on um, building your sites. And uh, cool, um, I'm gonna republish and gonna click done and we're gonna call it a day.